let's do a thought experiment. Imagine that after the Alberta government appointed its own CFO, which it's going to, imagine that this CFO took a look at the laws on the books, noting that, you know, actually uh, the right to self-protection is a charter right. And then he looked at the way that the authorizations to carry handguns are, are being executed in this country and looking at the law and then he sees that people that can show they work in the bush, they're allowed to have handguns, but people who are, let's say, fishing in grizzly country or bow hunting or just hunting, because they're doing it recreationally, those people, they're not allowed to have ATCs. And this new CFO thought about that for a while and says, well, that's kind of arbitrary. Why, why should this class of people be allowed to carry these handguns and the other class not? Now imagine that this CFO came to the conclusion, since he's a reasonable person and was picked on the basis of being a reasonable person, like uh, somebody who is an average Albertan, somebody who understands the people of Alberta, not somebody coming from some remote city in liberal land, somebody who thought for himself. Let's say this guy decided, you know, I think it's uh, perfectly called for to allow people, if they're properly trained and they pass all the, you know, the same uh, tests uh, that uh, people who currently have ATCs pass. I see no reason why such people shouldn't also be allowed to have authorizations to carry. So this uh, new CFO, he has the power to do it, so he says, I'm going to grant ATCs to such people. Okay, so now some time passes and a uh, year passes, there's no more increased crime rate, there's no murders going on in the bush. The whole population of Alberta, the shooting community and the sporting community and outdoors community, they are just, they are just ecstatic over this, this new provision and this new way of doing things that the CFO is operating under and uh, you know the interest in handgun use is, is just surged right through the roof like people are taking courses they're they're at the gun ranges they're perfecting their techniques they have to pass this proficiency test and and this becomes a really big thing you know, kind of like the airsoft community used to be a big thing until this bill and uh, as a result the numbers are growing and growing you know there's hundred people, there's, then there's a thousand people, then maybe there's more than a thousand people with, with handguns and they're uh, using them responsibly in the bush. I mean these are, they're, let's say the stipulation is just like the current ATCs, that you have to be in a remote region, that you have to have it exposed at all times. And all these, uh, you know, uh, regulations are currently apply to people who have uh, ATCs at the time. So, you know, another year passes and doggone it, there's no, there's no bank robberies and uh, they're not, not knocking over little grocery stores in small towns. Uh, they're not uh, shooting each other and, uh, yeah, there's the crime and the murder rate, they haven't gone down. So, this is terrible as far as a liberal would look at it. This is awful. Where's our boogeyman? What are we going to run the next election on? I mean, what else are people going to look at? Are they going to now have to look at the way we handle this COVID crisis? We can't have that. we got to have our boogeyman. And our boogeyman is gone because it appears that uh, from what's happening in Alberta that these guys that go hunting and stuff like that they're not the huge danger to society that we've been telling them all along and uh, maybe we'll 
actually have to focus on taking measures to prevent crime if we want to get uh, in people's good books again and make it look like we're actually doing something as a government because uh, we've lost our guys, our targets. So I think this is a lot what's going on in the, in the construction of this recent Bill C-21. Because you'll notice that the way they wrote it, they made that a certain change. They, they're not completely stupid, these guys. They're shrewd political operators. They look at Alberta, and I think Saskatchewan too, and they see what these guys are doing. We're going to, they're, they're, these provinces are basically so pissed off with the feds that they're saying, okay, we are going to appoint our own chief firearms officers because we think that you're applying these laws in a totally irrational, uh, politically motivated manner. And these new CFOs, they could very well uh, decide to issue such ATCs. And uh, that has to be stopped, right? Because what if they were successful in showing that this is not such a, a bad thing after all? Now, this is, uh, this is where they added in this, this one line in that Bill C-21. You can take a look at it and you'll see for yourself. There's that one type of uh, ATC. There's actually these two types. One is for people who are using a handgun in a uh, legitimate profession. So that's the type of thing that would apply to trappers. But it wouldn't apply to somebody out in the wilderness for sport and pleasure. And then there's a second category of an ATC that is for protection of life. Now that protection of life one, it is so strict and narrow and unused that it's basically irrelevant. I think there's only one person in all of Canada who has that. And that person actually can carry a handgun concealed on him. He has actually a legitimate threat on, uh, on his life. So they, that law is there, but it's for like basically one person. So we have only these two categories, the one for people who have a job in the bush, that could include guides too and other few, but they have to be jobs. And then there's the one for the self-protection that there's only one of in all of Canada. Now, what could happen if the CFOs, uh, the provincial ones, took over, really the law is just written for anybody who uh, requests an ATC for protection of life. So that uh, doesn't exclude people necessarily who go out in the bush. They are in uh, bear country and they feel that they need to have a little bit of protection. And they're carrying a bunch of stuff. They have their reasons. And they've shown that they're proficient with handguns. They know how to holster them and unholster them, all that kind of stuff. There's really no reason why they shouldn't be able to take a gun that is really designed for that task. That's what a handgun is really good at. It's something that's quickly accessible and it's, uh, uh, it's they can be quite powerful. Uh, you have to know how to use them, but you know, it's designed for the task. <laughs> and uh, it's always with you. It's not 10, 20 feet away while you're working on something. So these kind of people could theoretically be added to that second class if the provincial CFOs had anything to say about it. So that is why this line was inserted in C-21. They're scared. They're scared they might lose their boogeyman. Because that line says that those kind of ATCs, those shall only be uh, administered by the federal commissioner. Some sort of federal commissioner. So that's totally out of the hands of the uh, provincial CFOs. And that's the reason for it. They want to prevent that. They want to prevent the, the possibility 
that it might succeed this change in way of doing things because they need us they need us bad and the worse liberals do the more they're going to need us that's the really sad part about it is the worse the liberals do and the stupider they look the more they're going to need the gun community because we're their target Yeah.